Hey everyone, welcome to Frame Academy Project 5, Part 3. We're going to dive into using 2D video uh, in your projects. Hope you did okay with the challenge for the last section, uh, adding a pauser uh, component to your audio controls. I basically just copied and pasted my song stopper component, uh, renamed it to song pauser, and uh, renamed my function from music stop to music pause. Uh, the name of the function can be whatever you want. And then most importantly, instead of this dot stop sound method, I'm going to use the dot pause sound method. Then at the end of the day, I attached this song pauser uh, component to the pause box uh, that is part of my music player user interface. So there's song pauser right there. Okay, uh, we're going to dive into video now, though. Uh, I'm hoping this will be pretty short because we're sort of reusing a lot of things that we've already learned. So let, uh, let's dive right in. The first thing um, is the A video entity. So with sound, you know, we, we used a component, the sound component. We did sound equals and then put the source of the, uh, the audio entity. But for video, uh, you don't use a video component. There's actually an A video entity that you can drop right into your scene. Now, I put this in the starter project. You can see below the video just a little bit. You'll see I embedded uh, a project here that has these updates in it. So I uh, refer to that throughout this video. But if you check out uh, my line 121, you'll see my A video entity. And for the source, I'm setting, I'm uh, using the uh, hash sign and then the ID of the video element that I've already preloaded in my A assets uh, entity, the A-frame asset management system. So we did this already, I did this already in part one. I encourage you to upload your own video assets here. First, drag it into your assets folder and then uh, reference it here using its URL. But then once it's here and you give it an ID, you use that ID down in your HTML to actually bring it into your scene. So I've got the source is my video clip, not my sphere vid clip, but this is the regular video clip. And then I also gave it a position, rotation, width, and height. Now, that position um, and that rotation will put it uh, on the left wall of the scene. So I'm just loading up the scene right now. And here it is over here. Okay. Now, you'll see that I've got two buttons uh, on the video. I actually nested those buttons uh, inside of my A video element. So you'll see in between the opening and closing tags for a video, I've got um, some other elements, right? There's a, a vid play box that has other elements nested inside of it. Uh, the triangle right, that makes up that play button. And then the pause box has two entities inside of it, those two planes that make up that pause icon. So that's where I'm getting those. And the reason why I nested them like that was just because if I ever did want to move this whole thing around in the scene, I could just move the position of the video and everything would move along with it. Okay, So uh, that's just why I did that there. OK, fantastic. So how do we actually get the video to play now? Uh, how do we get those buttons to work? So this is very similar to the audio controls component that we made before. So when I started this out, I actually just made a copy of this JavaScript file, which you can do by clicking this button. You select it, and then there's a little drop down, and you can click copy. And it'll give you a chance to rename the file. And I renamed it uh, public slash JS slash video controls dot JS. Okay. Here's my new file. And um, Instead of naming the component song player, I named it video player. So I made that change up there. And then the key difference here, there are two kind of key differences between audio controls and the video controls. So with audio controls, if you remember, uh, we made a variable that contains a reference to uh, the entity with the sound component on it, which uh, in that case was the music panel, which had that sound component right on it. So we did a document.query selector for that music panel. For the video source, you can actually just reference the asset directly as it, as it exists in the A assets entity. So you can actually just directly reference the uh, video clip again 
Um, we did it once already, making it the source of the A video uh, element, but we're doing it again here, uh, just referencing it here in the component by doing a um, let video source equals document dot query selector uh, video clip, just using the ID of uh, this video element. Okay, fair enough. And then um, once you do that, it's it's very similar to before. You're you're defining a, a function uh, that once that function is called, it'll play that video. So we're doing our typical function uh, syntax. We're giving it a name, video play, uh, blank parentheses for now, the arrow uh, syntax, and then in the curly braces is the code that you want to run uh, when the function is called. And instead of referencing the component, because we're not actually using a video component, you actually can just use uh, this dot play method that is part of um, the video element. It kind of it's a method that comes with this video uh, HTML element, and you can always use it if you use uh, video or or audio. So you can just use this dot play uh, method here, and then just as before, we're going to attach this to a button so that when people click um, that play button it'll run our video play function. So you add an event listener, takes two values. The first is the event you're listening for. We're listening for a click. And the second value is the name of the function you'd like to call once that click happens. It's our new video play function. And uh, because we put this on this, we want to make sure we attach the component to the right entity because whatever we attach it to, that will be what this refers to. So I attached it to that play button uh, the vid play box that I have uh, nested inside my video element. So see here, I've got video player right there. So that's why when you are checking out the scene and you click the play button, the video will indeed play. Okay. Uh, a quick step that I forgot, because you did make a new JavaScript document, you do want to make sure you import it into your head element using a script element, right? Just as we've done with our other JavaScript files, just do a script source equals and then the name of the file, and then the component will be ready to use. Okay, for the challenge, I'd like you to make the pause uh, component that'll control the video uh, pausing. And uh, just so you know, the method instead of dot play is just dot pause, okay, that you wanna use. So you pretty much just want to copy and paste this, but you want to swap out, um, you know, rename everything as you need and make sure you have the right method here. If you rename this function to video pause, just make sure you change the name here too in your event listener so that it is finding the right function to call once that click happens. Okay, good luck. In the next part, we're going to get into 360 video, which will be fun, uh, but good luck with this, setting up your uh, video controller. Alrighty, see you next time.